In this video, I'm going to show you how to do your accounting for the year end in 10 minutes. And obviously, if you have 57 bank accounts, it's going to take you more than 10 minutes to do it. But this is really the basis of this. And I'm actually a certified public accountant. I don't do a ton of accounting. Obviously, I do accounting. But I want to go over a real practical way that me and my team help our clients do their accounting in Excel instead of just based on PDF statements, using QuickBooks. There's so many great software tools that are good for keeping monthly reconciliations, doing really good accounting. But if you are someone who has just an LLC in your own name, you're selling on you're selling on the internet, you're still doing some e-commerce, you're doing some consulting and you have money in and you have basic expenses, you don't need some complicated software. You don't need to have monthly reconciliation. You don't need all this crazy monthly accounting. You can do your accounting in 10 minutes. Now, I took transactions from Mercury Bank and I have a whole year of 2023 statements, a whole year of activity. And I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to do this accounting and very, very quickly and show you exactly how we do it in CSV. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go on to Mercury or go on to your bank and go to transactions. And all the banks are different, but they're all similar in this way. You're going to go to the transactions and you're going to download the transactions for the entire year in CSV. That's comma separated values. Most people call it an Excel file, but Excel is a service by Microsoft and I'm actually using Google Sheets because it's free and I don't want to pay for Excel. So it's different. If you have a single member LLC, it's just income and expenses. It's profit and loss. If there's any kind of distributions, they wouldn't they wouldn't apply and they wouldn't go into this transaction. So right now, look at you have the the date, the description, the amount, the status, and I think I might have done the description myself already, but it doesn't matter. I don't think this actually comes in here. I think this is I took this from some work papers, but let me hide this. So the first thing I'm going to do is not actually play with the transactions. I'm going to create a top level sheet. And I like to do this because we need to get the, the, the balance sheet and we need to look at a couple things. So this is going to be top sheet, whatever I'm going to call it. Number Step number one is going to be review the prior year balance sheet. I'm, going to, I'm really starting from scratch here. Now on the cat on the balance sheet, we're going to have cash. And let's say this is 12 31 2022. And it's going to be 12 31 2023. We have cash. That's it. And then we have income and expenses. So then we have net income, net income, and then partner accounts. And if you have multiple partners, this would be where if you and your partner, Fred, each take $5,000 distribution, that's where you would account for this. Uh, this is going to be very, very simple. The account starts with zero cash because let's say they had no activity last year and they just opened the account in 2023. There's no income and there's no partner accounts. Let's actually, yeah, let's do it like that. So we need to see what the year end cash was. I don't know if they actually will tell us on here. Um, so I'm, I we'll just do it ourselves. So here's the transactions. Here's what we got from Mercury. So what we're going to do is sort it by the bank description. So we're going to click on the top line and we're going to go to this little guy, choose a filter, and then we're going to do sort A to Z. Great. And now I'm going to make this bigger. And I'm going to go to this tab right here and I'm going to go to description. So this is going to be a failed transaction. This is for Facebook. So this is going to be advertising. It's with Facebook. So all the Facebook crap is going to be advertising. We're going to go through it all. Facebook, Facebook, advertising. Great. And then Stripe is money coming in. So that's going to be sales. So maybe you'll have another um, business where you have, let's say you have on here, Tello. And that's going to be phone. And then you have internet. You have uh, Google Business, and you can call these all. You can call these software. You can call this. Uh, um, you can make it together. Phone and internet. So we have the sales for Stripe, and I'm actually gonna press this little thing and the sum button, and I'm just gonna highlight all the sales from Stripe. So all the sales, and I know there's better ways to do it. Obviously, there's easier ways, but from here, I'm just gonna get that total, and then I'm gonna go up to the advertising, and I'm gonna get this total. So we have 66,644 sales and we're going to go to um, advertising uh, and apparently there was no cost of goods sold. You were just selling an info product on the internet and that's great. You made an info product and you ran ads and you sold it. Uh, there should be some hosting. There should be other expenses, but this is a bad example for that. So the sales are going, the advertising was 66644, I think is what it was. And then the total sales was 153.082. So that's going to be on this sheet. We have 
153.082. And if we do net income, it's going to obviously be equals that minus that, 86,000. Great. So the cash at the end of the year is 86,438. And the net income is going to be 86,438. And that's the balance sheet. This is the, uh, I guess, total assets, liability plus equity. So let's, I don't want to, I really want to make this like teach you accounting in five minutes, but this is really the, the, the bare bones basic of this. Like total assets are going to be all of your fixed assets minus depreciation. If you have fixed assets, you might need a real accountant. An e-commerce business, you might have cost of goods sold in here too. It's still going to impact the same way. Now let's say you took out distributions of 50,000. Great. So now you're, um, well, the part that goes in your partner equity, but it's really going to just reduce. So this account's going to be net income and then partner equity is going to be negative 50, one, two, three. This is kind of combined on the tax return, but whatever. We're going to show it like that. And then this is going to be the net, obviously, equals that minus that. There's your balance sheet, right? So your profit and loss is going to be this. Let's put a little line on this one too. So let's say this is how you do your accounting for the year. Obviously, this is going to be a pretty simple example. And if you have cash here, it you're going to have equity here, but this needs to balance. If it balances, then you can move it forward to the next year. Now, I'm not going to teach you all of my experience of accounting. I'm just trying to literally show you how easy it is to download your transactions to Excel, sort them, and then say what one thing is and drag it all the way down. Now, for my team and people working with me, we need an actual balance sheet. We need to see what we have here in terms of assets. Um, but this is there. So I have another CSV that I pulled out that was like, I don't know, from 2018. I don't even know who, whose company this is or whatever, but it has a bunch of stuff on here. It's, it's going to be the same thing here, right? We're going to get this, and this is from Bank of America. We're going to choose a filter. We're going to sort it A to Z, Adobe, all the Adobe software, Amazon, Office, Bath and Body, Meals, <laughs> Entertainment, I guess. I might, I might call this one Distributions, unless they're running a bath store. Distributions. Um, I don't know what that means. And then you're going down through like these checks. You have to say what the check is. This is going to be cost of goods sold. Sure. Um, get those, all those checks are going to be cost of goods sold. And then once you, um, loan from shareholder utilities, fine. Insurance, bank charges. They're saying Lyft is all travel. These are all monthly fee, bank charges, online banking, transactions is going to be income. But you're going to know. And if you send this to me, I'm going to have to ask you because I don't know what this stuff is. So even when you work with an accountant, you're going to have to tell the accountant this stuff. So you might as well download it to Excel, sort it. Again, you press this little filter button. And then you click on the little arrow and you sort it alphabetically by the whatever description it gives you. And then you can give these blanket classifications. And you can see here. In about 10 minutes, we did two full bank accounts. We can sort it like this, and then we can have the total. Total bank charges, and this is how I do it. I know it's not the most efficient way. You can make a pivot table if you wanted to go to uh, insert <laughs> pivot table. Description, beautiful. We're going to add the amount. Mm, show totals. Not description. We're going to go to the classification not description now you go there's a pivot table so grand total is this and if you want to do it like this you can copy and we're going to combine it with this one top sheet and we're going to say it's the same company pay special values only so now it's in here and now if you want to now you can say we have all this other stuff and actually i want to make these pos positive amounts equals negative that and c and now we're going to pay special values only Great. So now I have this in the actual, because I'm doing, I don't want to get too crazy with trial balances with how we're doing all this stuff. So let's just put this in here. Let's move this up to right in the middle. 384, 38, 405, 38, 405. And we're going to also add, insert one above. This is going to be cash Bank of America, cash Mercury. Now we have to add just this other amount, right? So let's look at the or it's a negative amount of cash. In any case, this is how you do it, right? And I guess we'll finish. I guess I'm pot committed here. Delete these rows. Oftentimes, I'll have one. I'll do it like this, and I'll have this will be Mercury, and this will be Bofa, and this is how I'm going to classify and organize it. 
so that we can have it by account and we can have the total per account. I'd also like to combine it to the same Excel file. This is just how I like to do it. But at the end of the day, we need this to, uh, this is going to equal that plus that minus 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 that. And then when you drag it over, it's going to do the same for this one. So it's 4899 uh, income. Why does it say income? I messed it up. Actually, I just add it together. Paste the value only. Great. Oh, I messed it up, guys. Let's do it the old school way. Totals. Uh, we have total sales. And then we're going to have insert one below. I'm going to call this total expenses. And this is going to be the sum of this. It's going to equal that minus that. Great. And then this has to equal beautiful. Great. Negative 8101. So we're going to say this balance was 10,000 before. And now it's 10,000 minus it equals that plus that is what the balance is at the end of the year. If you don't follow me, I'm sorry, guys, but we're trying our best over here. Um, then the net income here is going to be equals that plus that. That's the real number. Equals that. Beautiful. And that's 36. Why is this 36? Because I'm doing math here. It has to be minus not B39, but we're talking D39. There you go. And now I know it took a little bit longer than I than I promised, but guys, listen, you need to look at your prior balance sheet. And if you're just a regular Schedule C, someone who has, you're doing side hustle, download the extracts to Excel, organize it, and that's what you can use as proof for the IRS if they ask, like, what are these numbers from? Here's my work. Here's what I did. You should have support for these expenses, especially if you're in the U.S. paying taxes or if you're a corporation. There's a lot of stuff you can and can't do with your accounts, but we're talking about the end of the year. It's already done. If you don't want to do this, you can definitely schedule a call with me and the team, jamesbakercpa.com slash schedule. We do tax preparation. We do accounting. We can do monthly reports for you. If you have a big business, you need to know how much money you have, where it's going, and instead you find out that your assistant's been spending $20,000 a month on 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 hats and you didn't even know about it until the end of the year then you should probably do monthly accounting obviously this is for a very simple business uh and i want to make this simple for you okay so i hope this helps like subscribe and uh, schedule a call if you don't want to do this otherwise let me know if you have any other questions or if i missed anything or if you have if anything else i can help with thanks